Hello, first grade. So today we are going to start to create this Egyptian collar. And our learning objectives for this assignment is that we will understand people from different places and different times have made art for a variety of reasons. And we are going to be able to use materials and tools safely and properly. We're also going to be able to create art for the purpose of recording history. So we looked at some Egyptian art and um, now we are going to create some wearable art um, influenced by Egyptian art. So what you're going to do to start this is you're going to get a large white piece of paper and a collar tag board pattern. First thing that I want you to do is with your pencil in the middle of your paper, you're gonna write your name and the day you have art. Day A, day B, day C. You're gonna flip it over. On the other side, you are going to line up the straight ends of your pattern with the top edge of your paper. And you can start the outer U and trace that first or the inner U and trace that first. It's up to you which order you do it in. And go very carefully all the way around one side and down and across the other. It doesn't have to be super dark so you don't need to press really hard. You'll give me the tag board pattern back and then you are going to paint this U with gold paint. So you're going to get a small cup of gold paint and a paintbrush and you're going to paint this on nice and neat. Remember you want to be pulling your paintbrush so you're never pushing the paintbrush away from you. You're either pulling it towards you or pulling it away. You want to get all of the white spaces. So we'll put a placemat under our work. I didn't put one under my work unfortunately. You'll put a placemat under your work so when you paint the top edges of your collar you won't get paint on the table. And you want to paint neatly and pull it around in the shape of a U. You don't want to paint back and forth zigzaggy because when the paint dries you'll still be able to see that. So you want to keep pulling it in a U shape. Don't leave any white paper showing. And I went ahead and put two coats of gold on. I painted it once across with a thin coat and then I went back and put a second coat of gold on just to make it more shiny and metallic and I'm trying to continue to make U shapes with my paintbrush because if I go like this and make zigzag lines those aren't going to go away. You're going to see those in, when this paint dries. So that's why I keep trying to make some nice smooth U shapes with my paintbrush so it looks as neat as possible. You'll take your cup and your paintbrush to the sink and I'll clean that out for you. And then this will go on the drying rack to dry. And when you get it back, it'll look something like this. And you can see my brush strokes. The paint is dry and you can still see my brush strokes. So that's why you want to take your time and paint smoothly. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to draw the outline of the in, inner edge and outer edge with a black chisel tip marker. And with the chisel tip, it's got a point on the end that will make skinny, but if you use the diagonal, the wide part, you'll get a nice wide line. I'd like you to try to use that wide line, and you're going to trace over your pencil lines. So this way, if you didn't paint very neatly and you painted outside your pencil lines a little bit, this marker will help camouflage your mistakes by covering up some of your messy paint edges. Now I painted outside the black line here and here, but I'm going to cut that off later, so that's okay. So then I'm going to do the same for the outer edge. And go slow so that you get a nice dark black marker line. I kind of messed up down here at the edge. That's not a very smooth line. So I'm going to try and thicken that up just a little bit to smooth out that jagged edge. Okay. So now that I've done that, I'm going to put my marker aside. And I'm going to use my pencil to draw two lines that curve in and around as neatly as possible. So I want to kind of keep them the same space width away from this U. So I could take like two fingers, maybe I'll do three fingers, and take three fingers, lay them down, and just lightly put a little pencil line um, on the other side of my three fingers. And then I put my three fingers along the black here and put a pencil line and turn three fingers. This helps me to um, have it spaced out evenly. So I'm going to go through all the way around and I'm turning my paper to make it easier for me. And now I can just kind of match up these dotted lines that I've made very lightly with my pencil and try and make them as smooth as possible. I'm not pressing really hard 
because if I make a mistake, I can erase it. So I can just take an eraser if I don't like something I did and just erase what I have there and then redraw it. But it doesn't always, if I press really hard with my pencil, that line isn't going to go away when I erase it. So I don't know if you can see that line on the screen or not. So I'm going to trace over it one more time, pressing a little bit darker. I wouldn't want you to do this. Notice how I turn my paper as I'm going around the U. Now it's an arch when it's facing this way so that it's just even. And so I want to do one more and I want to do it about halfway between these two. This line here, the outer line, and this first line that I did. So I'm going to lightly sketch that in, trying to stay right in the middle like it's the center of a road. I made mine, these turned out to be fairly even in width. If you want to make um, a skinny space and then a fat space and then a skinny space, you can do that. You don't have to make the spaces between these lines even. And now I'm just darkening this up so you can see on screen, but you wouldn't do this with your pencil. You would leave it light. So yeah, I think you can see that. All right, so then after you get those lines and you're gonna take your marker again, using the diagonal so you get a nice fat line, you're gonna trace over these pencil lines carefully. If you make a mistake, you cannot erase. So take your time and go slow and turn your paper as you work. If you miss your pencil line with the marker, once the marker, give the marker a little bit of time to dry, and then you can go back and erase those pencil lines that you miss. Okay, so now I have very, three very even spaces, and so I want you to add some pattern and some decoration. So you could do squares, diamonds, repeated lines, wavy, straight, zigzag. Um, I'm going to do um, a diagonal line that um, is like a, actually a zigzag line that zigzags just one big zigzag from one of these lines to the other nice and straight and you are going to probably want to draw this with your pencil first that way if you make a mistake you can erase i'm since i've been doing this a long time i'm the art teacher i'm just jumping into marker but i would highly recommend you draw this in pencil first because you cannot erase marker and I'm trying to make it kind of even on both sides the best that I can. So that's not too bad, actually. Um, so there's one. Maybe I'll do diamonds on the inside ring. So let's see. If I want it to be kind of the same on both sides, I'll start with my diamond in the middle. And then leave some space and draw another diamond. And then turn and do it on this side. All right. And I think I'll just do a straight line all the way around. So I'll start in the middle again and try and space these out evenly. So that's why I go back and forth to try to keep it even, the same number on both sides so it's symmetrical. And I would like you to try to do yours similarly and as neatly as you possibly can. Those are nice designs. I could go back and add some more details with marker. We are going to then cut it out. And I think I will add some sequins to the rest, some kind of jewel. So you can see on my finished one here, I did ovals with dots in them. I did a zigzag line again like I did on this one. I really like that design. These straight lines, I like those designs too, but then I added dots. Um, so we're going to add some of these sequins um, tastefully. We're not going to just put a bunch of glue and just drop a big fistful. We're going to place them strategically and purposefully in spots. So your table is going to get a little tray full of sequins. And what you want to do is pick out the sequins you're interested in using and make sure you have enough of that. So we're creating a pattern. We're not just gluing sequins down randomly. So I want to use these larger sequins. And I'm going to put those in the middle of the diamonds, so I need to make sure I have enough. This one's got a bunch of glue on it. It's not very pretty, so if I can find another one that I can use instead of that one, that would be ideal. Also, if I have different colors, I try to alternate them and make a pattern with them. I've got a couple more here, but this one doesn't have glue all over it. Someone hasn't messed this one up, so I'm going to use that one there. So let's see. If I had another white one, that might be a nice pattern created. So I will look through. Oh, I do have another white one. So let's see. White, gold, white, gold, white, silver. So let's move the gold here and put the white there. It's not really white. It's more pearl, and these are white. So actually, let me swap these. Okay. 
So there are those sequins that I'm gonna put there. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, gener be generous with your glue when you're gluing the sequins on. So lift them up, put a nice generous dot of glue, don't be stingy, and then squish it down. And it's okay if the glue kind of splurt splurts through a little bit, not too much, but a little bit, and um, that'll just help keep it stuck to your paper. And I wanna do probably some in this inner ring. Or I could do some on every other dot. I don't know which I want. I could add some to this third row too. Let's see if I can find something that I like. So I think that's good. So I just need to glue on my gold. I think that's tasteful and not overdoing it. And I need to glue on my red. So I'm gonna lift, be generous with the glue, and put a dot of glue and squish the sequins down into there. And then we're gonna punch some holes up here at the top and tie some yarn so that we can hang this around your neck. And that's how we are going to create our Egyptian collar.